Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rocket League Aftershock. We are into our third week of the podcast. It's going to be a very fun one because this week there is actually a lot of stuff that's happened. A little bit mm. sort of like behind the scenes elements and a lot of like various different bits that sort of get brought forward to the uh, surface of the whole Rocket League scene. So uh, there's a lot to get through today and we're actually going to get straight into it. I think my name is Switchblade J, of course. Joining me is Digi Bay himself. Uh, been a nice week, actually, all in all for... <laughs> you still don't like that. I love it. Nope. I still love it. I've got... <laughs> I'm never going to stop calling you that, but yeah, there's lots of uh, uh, there's lots of stuff to talk about, Bacon. So uh, I just want to gauge like very quickly how your week has been overall. Uh, super busy. I uh, was working on like in the background a lot of Renegade stuff coming up, um, which we may get a little uh, sneak peek, a little update later on about. But yeah, it's just loads of work going in the background, and you know we've got lots coming up this month. So big hype. Yeah, big hype indeed. Obviously, we're going to be bringing you all the tournament updates and, of course, hyping you up about the uh, uh, Renegade Cup itself. So make sure you get involved on the Twitter at RL Aftershock. Of course, exclamation mark Twitter in the Twitch chat if you're watching this live. Uh, also on the Discord links, which for those of you listening to the audio versions of the podcast is now going to be included in the description. So uh, mm -hmm. again, if you're watching live, that's explanation mark Discord in the Twitch chat. Now, let's just get straight into the news because we have a little bit to talk about here. Not all of it has been positive. We'll start off with with this clip from Jesse that made it to the front page of the uh, uh, subreddit. Uh, this is in regards to DreamHack, and uh, I think we're just going to roll it. So let, just to give you guys a gauge of what exactly is going on. Yeah, true. Did you uh, did you get the money already just... from DreamHack? No, actually not. <laughs> nice, me neither, yeah. man. No. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not even expecting the money at this point anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, uh, like, who the fuck takes ten, ten months or whatever? Ten months. Yeah, then, yeah. Like, actually, scam. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. ESL thinks it doesn't take this long. Like, yeah. people were complaining about three months ESL money. Yeah, but Dreamhack is another. Dreamhack is just fucking another. Like, honestly, I... uh, Ben, if you want to check that real quick. Uh... <laughs> We were muted. We were muted all that time. So uh, there we go. Something for me to edit out the podcast for. But uh, yes, we've been saved. It's fine. Um, but for those of you who weren't aware of really what's going on, basically that's talking about DreamHack Leipzig, the first big land that we had in 2018. And uh, apparently some of the winners, some of the uh, participants haven't been paid yet now. Also brought up on screen, there is a little bit of uh, uh, an exchange between uh, Mystic and Yukio of Flipside Tactics. So obviously Jesse was standing in for Flipside uh, during that particular uh, 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 point. And uh, you can kind of see what it says right there. Obviously, missed it going more like these dumbasses expected <laughs> me to get the money stuff sorted for them and then asked me seven months later why well, they haven't been paid. No, and UK responding, no, I literally filled the things and I had to and sent the emails as soon as it was available. Wait for months since there was no reaction. Um, I'm going to start with you, Bacon, on this one because uh, I, I think we're roughly going to have sort of the same opinions about this uh, mm. because for me personally, I, I, I'm a little bit sort of on the fence about this. I'm not really sure what to think, but I, I kind of have an idea that you're gonna you're gonna be able to uh, to formulate and sort of express my actual thoughts. Yeah. So for this sort of thing, I absolutely trust DreamHat. They, you know, they're a world recognized uh, tournament provider, not only for, from their lands, but you know, going around Atlanta, um, like I said, Leipzig there absolutely trust and they've never really had a bad reputation this to me seems like uh, a bit like mystic said he was expected as the captain to be the one to you know fill in all the details put in all their paypals bank account details whatever when really you know it can be on the players as well it's however the team decides to do things i will say though seven months down the line and dreamhack haven't you know got in contact being there like oh, you haven't given us any details or, you know, as soon as they start making the payments, going out to who hasn't filled in the forms that is bad in that regard. But still, if you're a player and, you know, you've heard other people getting paid, you should be going yourself to DreamHack instead of just really on the stream going, oh, I've been scammed. It's... <laughs> yeah, that it's, is... That, that, yeah. That, that particular part is what gets me the most because just because you haven't been paid doesn't necessarily mean that you've been scammed. And personally, like, you know, mm -hmm. I think this is more like player incompetence more than anything else. DreamHack generally tend to be trustworthy. To fill those of you who might not be aware of the background of DreamHack, they are like one of the OG esports organizers. Like they have been around for fucking yonks. You know, um, they've been around since way before Rocket League was even a thing. Uh, they've done countless events in several different games, Counter-Strike, Quake Champions, Hearthstone, you know, uh, Overwatch even at some points. And, and 
and also just expanding into PUBG, doing some really good work in that particular scene. You know, so DreamHack aren't, you know, scammers. They aren't scam artists by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and certainly with this little thread coming in from Mystic and, and Yukio, it does kind of hint at the fact that the players aren't really focused too much on the prize money and trying to get paid out overall, which is why a clip like this is kind of confusing to me, because if you do yeah. care, why have you not chased it up yet? And just to like reiterate point, a lot of this stuff, and with tournaments especially, it takes a while to get paid out because not only yeah. do all the money from sponsors have to be paid, uh, normally it's via invoice, so near enough you put out the tournament, you put out the work, and you actually then go invoice the companies so that they can take you know a month, two months, whatever's the agreed part of the contract to get paid to you. Once you've got all the money in as a tournament organizer, that's when you pay out so that you've got everything covered. You're not going to you know pay players money which you can't actually yeah. pay them you know so just for an example uh rock league india when they hosted the asian open what was that back in may uh i actually only got the message today from one of the admins saying oh we've finally been paid by twitch um can you give me your paypal on that you gotta think that's what four months down the line it's expected it's just what happens we all had stories or heard stories anyway of rlcs players uh, players taking a whole year to get paid for playing in them and it's just unfortunately the industry if you're a pro player generally if you're just starting to hit the pro scene still keep your day job like it's not a constant flow of money you've got to yeah. really get into like a year's work say before you can start going okay i'm bouncing from this contract this contract and you're going to you know, have a sufficient money inflow. Like at the start, it, it's not realistic. And I think that's one thing where newer players, especially Rock League, where they're all new players, essentially, it's not like you've come across from Counter Strike or a different game. You're learning this as it's going on. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it, it's a crucial thing to point about sponsors and everything. Because you know, I've had several points in my career where you know I've been working in Counter Strike. People know me that that's my full time job. Um, but you know, there's been points where my invoices have been delayed due to a sponsor being delayed on their own payments or just trying their best mm. not to pay it out as such. But most organisations I know, with the exception of one particular case, but that's another topic for another day, won't be like starting <laughs> a pack up shop and like mm. just fuck off without with the money. They're not going to do that. You know, they're, they're gonna they're, they're gonna like if you just keep chasing it, they'll probably be able to pay it out and you know, for me, I, I certainly don't think that DreamHack is one of those companies that will just stall for as long as possible. There's probably a legit reason. There's probably a, uh, uh, there's probably, again, like I say, a little bit of player incompetency. Um, and I, I, I'm glad that this drama didn't blow over. I'm glad that no one started mm. tweeting DreamHack like, yo, what the fuck's going on? Because as we saw earlier this week as well, there, there can be some serious pushback when pro players start, you know, speaking out and making some noise. And in some mm. cases, at, that pushback might not be necessary. Yeah, and just <clears throat> to reiterate the point, because we know from ourselves uh, working on Rewind's Coliseum, that's why in the actual sign-up bit, we went, can we have your PayPal details now so that near enough, as soon as we do receive the money, we can pay it out. It's still being processed and all of that, but you know, we're not here trying to scam you out of money. It's just how it all works. You've got to sign legality forms and all of that. You've got to wait that period of money for like money to transfer, like say from Cyanix, because they're American. It's then got to be transferred from American dollars over to we were doing euros. So there's a lot of time between everything because you're using multiple different companies to get it out to you guys. So you just got to deal with it <laughs> essentially and make sure that <laughs> your end is completed. It's not waiting on you because, you know, if it is DreamHack, how many players was at that tournament? Like, let's just say so many. There was, oh my God, like 64 players were to be paid. We'll just say like a rough guess. Um, because, you know, Rocket League's three players per team, whatever, that is a lot of different, like, payments to be made. So you can yeah. quite easily get lost, you know, and they'll check it, but it's not going to be immediate because they've got other tournaments to run. Yeah, at the end of the day, if you're not being paid, you know, this is industry practice. If you're not being paid, it's kind of on you to sort that out. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, just, uh, just a word of advice to any players that might be waiting on any sort of prize pool payout, not just from DreamHack, but from anybody else in the scene, mm -hmm. whether that be your know, rewinds or rivals all the way up to fucking psionics you know because oh, you know yeah. Oh, yeah, insomnia and psionics like i think you mentioned earlier this week that psionics actually in the first season of rlcs took like some stupid amount some of time to pay out yeah so, so yeah. for some players it was a year so you know I, i'm i'm not i don't think that's all psionics i certainly think that is some some cases for the players just not being able to cover off yeah. all their bases so you know just something that we just figured maybe it'd be a good idea to bring to the forefront and kind of like just just discuss it because there was a lack of discussion around it. And I'm, again, I'm halfway glad for that because I'm glad it wasn't blown, blown completely out of proportion. Yeah. 
Yep, that was definitely good. But one thing which... That, that certainly me. was blown out of proportion, yeah. actually. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn this segment into what gave me an aneurysm this week, dude. Like, this was <laughs> such a shit show. This was such a shit show. So... Um, earlier this week, uh, RLRS caster uh, Jorby, Joey uh, uh, Aarons, uh, posted a little uh, a tweet. And uh, I haven't got all the screenshots available because that's how big of a shit show this really was. Um, and in particular, he said something like, I'd love to see the boost pads light up uh, either blue or orange, depending on which team picked mm. up the pad. Would Im help immensely with understanding what is happening at a glance rather than uh, having to guess who took boost. Um, and this received some serious backlash. There was like, you know, a thread between him and Sammer, which admittedly, <laughs> was quite constructive because Sam was talking about you know, saying I, I think it could potentially reduce the ceiling and back and forth and back mm. and forth and in this sort of tweet right here uh that's coming up on screen from uh, uh, uh subway he said it's threads like this that show how little understanding some of our desk and casting talent have of the game being aware of who has boost in such a, is such a big difference in decision trees and i'm just there like oh jesus christ now Fair play, you want to criticize a commentator, but why does it have to be everyone understands so little of the game on the mm. desk? And uh, this got even worse by a tweet. We don't actually have the screenshot, unfortunately, because I was too busy getting tilted over this shit. Uh, but uh, Unthink uh, posted a little tweet. Actually, I might see if I can post this in... Let me see if I can get a screenshot and post <laughs> it in the image dump uh, because mm. he was um, he was sort of like uh, uh, giving a comment about things. So it's actually and... in this whole thread, I'm going to just say, we're not having an attack on this subway guy or whatever because... Oh, there was even Absolutely a point not. where Rizzo got angry at it, and then it was purely because Unthink's point, it might just be down to the number of characters uh, that, you know, you can only use on Twitter, 240 or whatever. Oh. It wasn't sort of, like, expressed completely. So this was all talking about spectators, and in the original tweet, he didn't say that. You know, it's just more that was assumed by everyone. So, and then, you know, again, with Unthink's tweet, it was also there getting a bit angry because he was saying, oh, if um, we're not allowed to, like, have a go at players, like, say what they're doing wrong, then players can't have a go at us. And it's just basically a whole snowball avalanche effect of everything kept going wrong and the actual point wasn't communicated properly yeah and you, you see us a lot especially on social media and the biggest point here is that we just want like the casters know that it's hard for spectators you gotta remember you might be a pro player saying this but you've got your 12 year olds or whatever that are in bronze that really love rocket league but, you know, for them, the under there needs to be extra bits for them to understand. It's like why we say we want to be able to see all the boost meters and that sort of, of the players at all time. Because the spectator functions in Rocket League, there needs to be a bit more. Um, the right way to do that, though, is, you know, a bit hard to say because we don't know the best way to put out that overlay because Rocket League is so completely different from other games. Yeah, well, we've got a little segment coming up on that a little bit later, but we'll, we'll talk about that for now. Actually, we're just going to bring up the on screen right now, the uh, the tweet from Unthink itself, which initially does sort of seem like it's a little bit grating. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. first community members don't have an understanding on the limitation on the limitations set on casters, which actually generally mm -hmm. I tend to find that they don't. That's a part that I can wholeheartedly agree with. But well, one um, thing, all, like, all of my experience with... throughout Rocket League and, and, and Counter-Strike just knows community members they don't have a fucking clue. They really don't. Like, it, it is quite grating when I've heard such, you know, I, 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 I've stopped looking at the Global Offensive Red subreddit, for example, because there's usually a thread going up about every single caster in the scene and how shit they are. I stopped <laughs> looking at HLTV threads because they also have threads. That, no, mate, there's like mm -hmm. literally the least, the, the, the worst moderated forum in the history of the internet. Like, it is that bad. Um, so, yeah, credit to <laughs> Unthink on making a valid point there. The second point is where I can see people taking issues but unfortunately with twitter again character limits and secondly you don't have enough mm. space with just letters and words to announce the new ones because i do think that unthink was being um I, I do think that unthink was being a little bit sarcastic in his own line mm. of form because oh, i don't think that you can be yet, so yeah <laughs> I, I don't i don't think you can be this ignorant and you know be this relevant mm. at the same time so you know I, I give unthink the credit of the doubt but as you say if you're able to get towards this tweet you'll scroll down you'll see that rizzo put it out and then unthink just got a shit mm. ton of hate for this because people just didn't quite understand it. and it got overblown to hell the thing the thing that triggers me the most about it though was literally this all came off of a suggestion that one caster said <laughs> 
said, I want more information for my casting. And everyone just went absolutely fucking <laughs> mental. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Why mm. is this such, why is there such a great, why is there such a, 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 a why is there such such tension between pro <laughs> players and casters it, it makes no fucking hmm. sense whatsoever <laughs> like just because whenever we say oh for spectators we want like i would love there to be a mini map where it shows you every single player on the pitch at the same time showing all the boost uh what boost is active on that mini map and all that and then you think well you've only got so much space on screen so some of those ideas can be done but one thing we'd love is with like the new Twitch extensions, like being able to, I think I saw it in the OCE stuff, like having their polls near enough put into the overlay. Could you not do that with everything like heat maps of players and get all your statistics there? I don't know, an API that feeds out for a separate site, which Sinex has put out and we can just literally look at that because one, casters would absolutely love to have heat maps. Like that's even oh, more yeah. detail, which we can give. Cause you got to think like a lot of people say casters don't put out a lot of knowledge. That's because it's because we don't, we don't have, have any fucking knowledge to put and there. That's why these suggestions come up. And then you <laughs> shit on us for doing whatever the fuck we want to do to try and make our job easier. <laughs> and you wonder why I get so fucking tilted, you know? Well, it's not about making it easier because you got to think that's more information we've got to digest and then put out. If anything, it's making it harder because it's giving us more work. But to it's do. giving us but a better because... broadcast, you know? Exactly. That's it. We just want to put on the best show, essentially. And and that's the thing about it is that when when people when people get so triggered about shit like this and 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 people get really up in arms about a suggestion, not even like oh yeah we're gonna it's not like Sonics are coming out and saying we're gonna add this to the game and then people going that's a stupid idea like that's fair enough but when people are just trying to draw up a discussion and everyone tries to shut it down by by dogpiling other people and overblowing mm. things beyond belief that is what gives me the aneurysm I swear there was a massive vein going all down the side of my face that day just like please beam me up beam me up like <laughs> it, it's stuff like that that really mm. it, it really grinds my gears because again it, it was absolutely not needed it was like the, the drama mm. we covered i think last week or the week before about um oh, on stacks i think it yeah, was, on stacks, it? yeah on stacks on the stacks drama it's like none of none of the hate <laughs> none of that hate is required you know if he said something outrageous mm. like if he said all pro player or, or if he said something stupid like you know something absolutely outrageous like oh all pro players are just shitters and they don't know how the fuck to play the game like i do then fair <laughs> enough be outraged about that that's fine and justified this is a suggestion you know mm. like and, and oh oh my god oh. Basically, in that situation, be like Chakron. If you don't agree with it, actually put forward yeah. your point and say, I respect what you're saying, but this is why I don't agree. Yeah, be it's more like, like Chakron. <laughs> <Chakron. laughs> be more like Chakron. He is our standout community member for the day. Thank yeah. you, Chakron. I'll, 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 I'll mail you 10 bucks or something. I don't know. Anyway, final thoughts on this one, because <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Basically... The community has to realize that casters near enough up until a professional level are doing this from a hobby and then even going on to that professional level the you're casters don't actually hobby. yeah you're still doing it technically as a hobby and they've got to learn from each other there's no sort of training or anything you can actually go to there so these casters are doing the best with what they've got and i think they're doing a great show i'm loving last week of rlcs where all the casters were like yeah i think i saw um final carpet and like sunglasses and the fez love that get more personally in there and personality in there and that is great you gotta start making the show more fun that's where we can go now and it's because they're given they're being given more control essentially and that's always good i think we're a big shout out to ben by the way for adding that move on command that is something else <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful it is beautiful there you, go. you can't be this ignorant and this relevant and i think that is <laughs> i think that <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think that oh. is the point to be made right there. Mm. So let's move on to something that a little bit less tilting, but still kind of <laughs> tilting in, in its same sort of way. Um, we've had the GFIN E Elite Series um, um, draft happen, uh, mm. obviously live on their Twitter. If you're watching their entire feed, you'll know exactly uh, 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 what ended up happening. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and it is kind of tilting in a certain sense, because while we did get most of the... Uh, 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 most of the subs decided for the elite series uh number one we still don't know half of the main rosters for the teams number two we actually don't have any information on unilad virtually whatsoever we have one sub and 
Jink, uh, 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 Gfinity haven't you actually posted anything about... You love playing 1v3 this season? Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> SJ 1v3 everyone. No, no to be fair, that'd be better than the last Uniland roster, but hey-ho. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, we only know about one sub from Uniland. Mm. We don't even know what their main roster is. And for other teams as well, like uh, th this is this is really. But we don't even know what the ASUS roster is. We don't know what the no. MP roster is. We don't, don't know what the last. hashtag roster. Like we're saying, they're not announced before these draft pickups were put out. They should have announced the main rosters. Because yeah, again, but, this is yeah. another problem with um, the GFIN series, and I think we could go into this a little bit later. These draft pickups are all great players. My biggest annoyance is that because the main roster is normally picked up to play in, you know, full time and they come with a sub, these draft pickups never really get played. It was like, um, you know, Ollie last season, he should have played at least once for Vitality, but they were gunning for the win, and rightfully so. So they didn't play with their draft pickup. And you could say as well, Jay, that the teams have no like motivation to play with the draft pick uh, with their draft pickups because of yeah. that group stage, the single round robin group stages where you've got three games to play. Oh, no, sorry, five, because it's five on each side of uh, the league, whatever you want to call it, little pools. You've got five, uh, you've got four RLCS games to play. Way. Yeah. And you've got to come out in the top two of your uh, thing to go through. So you're not going to risk it by playing the draft. You want your main team, the strongest roster. If they had a single round robin, um, you know, all 10 teams in the same league, and then saying, oh, you've got to play your drafts at least once, that'd be a little bit more reasonable. But at this point, the drafts are sort of there just purely as a PR stunt. And I think the draft is a great idea. It's just not being executed right, is it? Yeah, absolutely not. Like the, the, some of the players here are actually really, really great names. And we'll run through sort of like a general roundup mm. and summarize the whole thing in a second. But at the Elite Series concept, especially with the draft itself, as you say, it could be executed so, so much better. Um, I feel like maybe if you drafted a team exclusively, like, you know, no no subs from the draft, but like just draft like, you know, a full-blown team or like sign a full-blown team from the Challenger Series, I think mm. that would probably be a, a, a bit more of a... Uh, a a, a bit more of a better way to structure the whole Gfinity Elite Series draft because, as you say, you know, like there's there's players in in, in the Elite Series in the past that have never been played. You know, like as you say, Ollie mm. is one of the most famous examples. Um, I've known, you know, I know pro players that played like one series and that was it. Just well, that's my season done. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Oh, till, till next draft. See you later. <laughs> uh, you know, like that, yeah. that 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 that's not the way to build talent. And I'll admit, Gfinity Elite Series have done has done some really good stuff in developing EU talent. But my main problem is that it can do so much more. With the draft mm. yeah and it's definitely you just said that uh, a second ago we've got 10 teams at the moment what if we went to 12 teams and those other two were purely draft picks like but draft teams essentially so not just random players thrown together but actual teams that have done really well and got picked up that would be sick like could you imagine if i know the intellectuals have uh, split ways now but imagine from all they're playing together in the gfinity series which they would have been eligible for this idea because they were playing in them non-stop. They were grinding the way. That's what got them so close to getting an RLRS spot. But if you had that, they would have got picked up by an org. You would have players that weren't getting paid, essentially, now getting paid for, what, the two months that they're playing in the Gfinity stuff. And that is a better way to do it, essentially, than just having these subs which are thrown in there. They're more of a backup at the moment than anything. So if you can't get the main rosters there, you can go, oh, don't worry we've got this player we can just basically rely upon, which isn't a good way to do it because those backups are generally never needed because, well, organizations, orgs, have to organize this well and actually get the players there. So it's all, you know, a bit silly to have three subs, essentially, because most of these teams have a sub already, don't they? Yeah, and uh, I just noticed Junior popping into chat about, you know, knowing about some of the rosters, particularly for Asus in, oh, yeah. in particular. I mean, th that's not the problem here, though. <laughs> it's not public information. No one... Yeah, we know it, it, no already one, I mean, We, we, we already rosters, know. It's not our right to say, say anything, but the problem <laughs> is the fact that we don't know many of the main rosters, and they haven't been announced. They were going to be announced after the fact of the draft, which is just a little that's bit silly, in my thing, opinion. Yeah. So... You know, let's run through the draft itself, actually, just get through some mm. of the um, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, get through some of the uh, uh, pickups. Uh, Method managed to draft in uh, Trupo and Z9. Uh, Fnatic got Andam and Nagfo. And I think Fnatic actually overall won the uh, the draft itself because that that, that combination of players, uh, and there are some seriously good talents in there. Um, and again, that's just from the draft alone. I'm not sure how that will Again, you're saying that. I'm looking at these. Like we said, they're all great players. So I couldn't actually say one team won it because XL, Oli and Breezy are great. Vitality, Junior and Ghostfire. They're awesome. Hashtag, I think probably they got one of the best players I think they could out of all of them. Ixo. Yeah. But I don't have a clue who Nora is. So that's a weird one there. Focus for Nordvin is joined by Mads. Don't know either of those as well. Um, looking down, like we're saying, Unilander we know is SJ. He's a great player, but no idea who is joining. Yeah, no him. idea who the second player is. That's the thing that tilts me the most. Like, mm. Why is there no announcement for the second Unilad player? Uh, uh, draft like g finity haven't said anything you need that haven't tweeted anything in like in months so mm. what's going on boys what's going on yeah it's just weird how it did that i would have been there like okay you've done that twitter feed that's fine make a blog post for it all condensed in it would literally take you half an hour to write up put on the website it's another new sort of article on the gfinity site which you can get hits off you know good for advertisement and then it's better for everyone to see afterwards out there and i don't know even tweet it out so it's just straight there this has been so disorganized that even exactly. us looking at it reading through was super confused not even to mention at the start of it where they were straight up at in at the start of each tweet it didn't show on their actual uh like main timeline or whatever it was just in the tweets and mentions bit so that was like super confusing that you had to look in yeah. a separate place and so you thought there at the start oh it's they've not tweeted anything for 20 minutes what's gone on yeah it, i think junior is saying yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, Junior said that there was an announcement for, uh, apparently they did get a sub called Switch. Uh, copyright in my name, by the way, I'm going to sue you for that. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, but, you know, that, let, let that just speak statements of the fact of how disorganized this was. You know, there were so many, you know, it, 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 again, as, as we were saying earlier, mm. it'd be much better if we had just one big blog post that detailed everything and then just put it that way um mm. and again also to add the actual teams themselves and the full main rosters before we know who the uh um uh, before we know who the uh, 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 subs are, and actually, I do, I do, I do love the fact that you that you've tweeted that you've sent me uh, that you sent us the, the link of Switch himself. But again, it just proves my point even further. Why was there not an official? And this was actually this? from Twitch, uh, from Switch, not from Unilad or whatever. Which again, really confusing. Why is he the one posting it out and not on the G Finity thing? Like we can, we didn't see it. Uh, another thing I saw quite a lot was they were doing hashtags for the players instead of ads, which meant the players weren't actually getting tagged, which was um, yeah, um, really odd. Uh I'm not sure about that because it depends. Really, it depends on Infinity are gonna are, are gonna structure it. Um, because uh, mm. like, if if they're gonna go off the player profiles and you have to list your Twitters on that uh, mm. on that profile, then I can give them a little bit of leeway and not knowing who the Twitter ads were. Um, you know, especially in the Elite Series in the Elite Series Challenger Series draft. Um, there's a mm. you know you, you could you, you you could be you could be forgiven for making that mistake. You know. Yeah. And yeah, oh, they did tweet out. Okay, cool. We'll take that one back then. But still, I again, never saw this. I never you, you saw this. It's not hard to get an intern because there's got to be a couple anyway at uh, Gfinity to near enough cover up and just go, okay, that's we found them. Can we just find their actual Twitters, like their proper ones anyway? Because Banana Man, I remember it, they tweeted the wrong Banana Man because it was Banana Man oh. RL instead of just Banana Man, which was a completely yeah. different guy. And it's just. <sighs> We're only having a go at it because Gfinity is one of the top sort of tournament orgs in Rocket League. And we yeah. just want you to be the top org, like the best you can possibly be. So simple little mistakes like this. It grates at us. That's it. It, it, you know? it does great. Like, you know, they, they should be held to a higher standard than this. So that's mm -hmm. exactly what we're going to do here. But, uh, you know, getting back onto the drafts themselves, um, if we were just going off these drafts alone and forgetting any of the main rosters, uh, who do you think won this whole thing? For me personally, I think Fnatic won. Uh, Andam and Nagflow are two really, really good players. And I think they kind of stand out above the rest. Um, I think XL got in mm -hmm. as well, getting Oli and, and Breezy in there. Uh, Oli, you know, as, as, as I believe, is just one of those tip players that could go so much higher in the Rocket League scene as a yeah. whole. So um, uh, I think still think Fnatic just about beat up XL, but XL coming at close second.
I said Vitality as well, Junior and Ghostfire. Ghostfire is nuts. Junior, as long as he's not being toxic and tilting his teammates, is great as well. Uh, that can be the only thing I can say about you, bud. Um, I, uh, that's from an outside perspective, though. It's weird. Mm. But definitely, <laughs> it feels bad, man. But yeah, that's, I think, the best three there. Vitality, you've got Greg in there deciding it all, so he knows who he wants to pick yeah. up. Uh, XL, that was down to the players. They decided that because I was speaking to McLovin, their sub, about that. And then, like you said, Fnatic, Andam and Nagflo, I don't know how the other teams didn't, like, you know, think to pick them up straight away. Fnatic had Nagflo, I think, last season. And then Andam was, like, the second pick. I don't know how you don't pick him up first. You know, he's such a good player. Yeah, yeah, and and it's for that reason I, I think that they just won overall. So uh, credit to them, uh, and there we go. Those are the elite series <laughs> drafts. So let's move on to our feature for this week, uh, which is going to be a little thing I like to call hit piece. It's a, a segment which we basically take a look. <laughs> Say again, sorry. Caster's tweet. Ah, right. Okay, this will be a nice opportunity to insert our little bit in there. All right, so before we get into the feature, one last little piece of news. <laughs> uh, obviously, a little bit of self-promotion as well, since we are involved in this particular segment. Um, but the... Um, the Rocket League Renegade Cup begins in just a couple of days, and we're going to be adding that to all of our uh, show plans as well coming in the coming few weeks as we get through the qualifiers. Um, but uh, the uh, announcement team for the English broadcast uh, has just been announced. And uh, you, you can see who's on there. I, I imagine Ben's <laughs> probably got the image up right now. Um, if not, I will just explain very quickly uh, when I can actually pull this up myself because, you know, Chrome is being a bitch today. Do you um, want me to do it? <laughs> no, no, I got it. I got it. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so we have from the big boys, uh, uh, Mega Shogun, Cole and Stumpy, the Subpar and HD boys, that nice little trio of just lads from the UK. And then mm -hmm. a few of us here from the community scene are getting involved. Digital Bacon, Jar of Dram, uh, Irelic, 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 Irelic. I releak. See, I'm, I'm, just, I'm always going to struggle with that. But yeah, <laughs> I releak's there. I'm there. Switchblade J. And uh, Mr. Crafton's also going to be part of the English broadcast for the Rocket Baguette Grand Prix. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. I've been working ages to try and get this together. Like I said, um, you know, well, I was the one actually put the roster together. Uh, Coliseum, we had a great run of show. Uh, the play, near enough mixing it together. Uh, we will actually have Damascus joining us on this as well. Um, he didn't confirm until after we had already had this graphic done, so that's a bit of a uh, annoyance there. But Damascus is in as well for his Frenchies, of course. Um, is such a great roster, and you got to think we've got to have such a large roster because this is going over a whole month. There is ten broadcasts, I think, in, no, eight broadcasts in total. Sorry, so you're going to see a lot of these casters. Maybe some for the first time have to cast with each other, but I think we can already guess the duos that are going to form from this, which is going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah, roughly. So, uh, of course, there's your talent lineups, just a little bit of self promo because we have big egos and we have to satisfy them at some times. So, there we go. Let's move on to our feature for this week. Uh, it's called Hit Piece. It's a segment where we go and take a look at a piece of content from the community itself and we critique it, we talk about it, we discuss ideas around it. Uh, and in general, we just we just bring to light some of the some of the creative ideas that some people in the Rocket League scene have. So, uh, this week, uh, in especially in regards to, it's kind of relevant because a segue from the whole Jawby Unthink thing into mm. uh, uh, this, uh, we had a, a post make front page of the of the uh, esports subreddit uh, saying, "Can we e please add something similar to this to the RLCS overlay?" And essentially, what it is, it's a very basic sort of uh, proof of concept. Um, mm. You know, uh, sum summarizing, you know, the, the players who's there and uh, their their boost numbers essentially, uh, which which is a pretty important thing. You know, the fact that we can't see you know, pure numbers and, and just, you know, exactly what we've got uh, uh, available to each individual player, which is such an important part uh, of, of of Rocket League to use, you know, and is, mm. is something valid, you know, we kind of, we, it would be kind of nice to have uh, a set of numbers like this involved uh, in the RLCS broadcasts. Um, but as well as that, it kind of made me think, hold on a second, we've seen like some of these proof of concepts before. <laughs> so I'm going to show off a few of them right now. Uh, here's a here's a great one from Strange Stranger. Uh, I think this is the best one as well. Um, well, I mean, I, I saw my, my best for the down the line, but <laughs> you know, there's certainly a very, very good one. This is the first one where I was like, okay, this needs to be in the game. This is the first time where I was like, Strangers needs, needs to be a designer uh, for <laughs> the... Um, uh, 
uh, for, for the Rocket League game because it's absolutely, this is such so OP. The fact that you can see, you know, the score, the goals, the shots. Mm. Uh, it would be nice if we saw that from every single player. Um, obviously, for this one, it's only who you're observing. And of course, I have a little de uh, I don't... A dem uh, demo thing for who's actually been demoed out of the server. So again, lots of information being brought not only to us as the casters, but also to the viewers as well. No, the reason why I love this one, you got to remember as well, it's showing how many jumps they've got uh, with the two cars above it. That's what that's showing. But I love the... points it's highlighting who you're watching at the moment jay so that is for me a great way of how to show you who highlighting imagine when it swaps over the camera of course another player you could see a little transition of that uh the score going away and then say torment then uh you know his box grows it's just a very nice and clean way to show the transition between players here you don't need to see the score of every player all the time of course when it goes around and shows them that's fine that's good but of course the important information the most important one is that boost and i like the addition because i didn't even think of this myself of that demolished player because you gotta think that's only going to be there for three seconds or so because that's how long the respawn is so it'd be just there imagine like a little pulse and image of demolished and then you see them with that boost spawn again that'd be so cool and this is a great way to show it because the only thing i can say that i don't like about it is not having that boost down the bottom right which everyone naturally knows from playing the game and i think could still mm. be, be implemented some way but It'd be hard to do it cleanly, if that makes sense. I, I think I think that's a, a worthy sacrifice for what you get in return. Yeah. You know? Especially especially because you know you'll be it, from from my personal experiences playing something like Counter Strike. Like you've got very very different things depending on whether you're actually playing or watching the game. So hmm. you, you kind of like adjust naturally depending on whether you're watching a tournament or whether you're playing the game as, in matchmaking or in scrims or whatever. So you know I, I imagine that's something that the, that the viewer base can sort of get used to over time. Um, again, I, I think it's a worthy sacrifice for what you get in return of all the boost stats and everything else in the bottom right hand corner but uh that moves on to another thing that i saw made as well from that uh, from within that thread as well uh this one is by uh albator and this is my personal mm -hmm. favorite just because of how clean it really is you've got like spaces <laughs> for the sponsors in the top right um you've got all the stats on goals assists and everything for each player um i think the only thing that's really missing um I think the only thing that's really missing is that uh, uh, is that demolished thing, is that whole demolished graphic. Mm. Like, oh, this uh, uh, this player has been demoed out the server. Also, could be used to uh, highlight. Oh, it should, could be nice to highlight who's actually being spectated at the moment because that's something that uh, 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 that is not actually in this design. But I, this is my personal favorite from a design aesthetic because I just love how the boost is around the circle in a similar way as it is in the game. You've got all these stats available. You've got you know basically everything. If I was casting with this, like I'd feel right at home with this sort of overlay. Mm. Yeah, for me though, Jay, like I said earlier about the score on the previous one, you're looking at this and you're going, okay, but without the name above his head, because whatever he, well, you don't have your own name above your head, who do I know I'm looking at essentially here? Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's pretty straightforward. That's the only critique I really have of this. Uh, the other one, like you said, has the mods, has the jumps, which is added information. I don't think jumps is necessarily a needed thing. Um, no. I like it because it shows that in that space. I wouldn't have jump or something else. I don't know uh, quite yet, but you could probably fit something in there. The jumps just is convenient for this uh, sort of case, you know, in the last one anyway. Yeah, and yeah, again, I'm not saying this is perfect. This is just my personal favorite from a design aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Again, I still think there could be some improvements on. Um, there's one more that I did want to show off as well. Uh, this one was actually uh, uh, from Squishy Muffins, if I uh, recall correctly. Mm. Yeah, um, he sort of like made another one, which is I think it really just demonstrates sort of like the the, the this was the only last creativity. Week as well. Yeah, this is only last week that he put this up, uh, and uh, this is also again not quite perfect. Again, from a design aesthetic, I still prefer the second one, but it's actually a role, a really good way you can implement it within the context of the current broadcast layout, where you still have mm. the stats. You can see who's playing, uh, who, who's currently being spectated. You can see their current boost as well as all the other boosts from the other players goals shots assists saves mm. everything is all up there for you to view the only thing the only real problem i could see it it, it, it causing is the fact that at rlcs land you wouldn't have a lot of space to put up the uh, the the player face cams but even then i don't think that's a major problem could you not have it like transition between the two or something maybe or you we could. know they the one thing i would say about this one and the one before it is unlike strangest one you don't have the player pictures next to each of the stats because we know from lan that sometimes they put the uh, cameras at the end of the uh, scoreboard up at the top, you know, over where the 
org pictures are essentially yeah. so that'd be a good way to still show which side is which org because you gotta remember we're thinking about not only our hardcore enthusiasts that always watch each rock league stream whatever but what if you're that person that's just tuning in for that first time or you're some like i said earlier 12 year old's dad who's watching with his son you know it's got to be yeah rock no league idea what's going the, on yeah rock league is one of the most accessible esports that's why it's so golden and could be such a big mainstream hit so you've got to try and make things as easy to understand as possible and when you're actually adding stuff that make it easier for first time people to watch it's not actually taking away from the fuses is it oh yeah and i can see that waffles is in the chat right now <laughs> saying it might be a bit of an information overload i mean personally <laughs> i've found that the more information you give the more view the more the viewer the more the viewer potential to understand things kind of grows especially if you already have a good concept of the game if you're sort of like watching the the, the <laughs> team play and you're taking a look at the way that the teams are playing overall and you can't quite tell who's got what boost on on on, on each side you know, you can kind of, you know, you don't have that team comm environment. You don't have that same sort of information that you have available if you're playing the game. So to be able to see that mm. info and to be able to, to watch what's going on, then I think that does kind of help out things a little bit better. And, and generally, there's actually a study that worked out well, it worked out well in FPS games. Uh, mm. In Call of Duty, they didn't used to have that. They added that and the audience interaction, the general audience understanding got much better. Same thing in Counter-Strike when they went from source to global offensive. They added the little scoreboard bars, very similar to what these designs kind of had right here. Um, and, and it actually ended up helping those games become the spectator esports that they are. Uh, and the cool thing about those sort of add-ons as well is that you don't actually need to rely on Psyonix to implement this into the game. Actually, I made this point on uh, on the Reddit post uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, the original Reddit post that gave that proof of concept. Uh, you know, if you have program, basically w watching Rocket League, all it is is you just in the game, and the the servers are sending the client a load of information, and all the game is doing is interpreting that information and spinning it back out as graphics and numbers and stats. Mm. And if you understand, and if you have any coding knowledge of the Unreal Engine, the engine that Rocket League runs off of, you can you can program that yourself. It's actually surprisingly easy. In fact, again, going back to Counter Strike, we've already got some uh, an app that you can download, and you can and, and you can get a custom overlay for Counter Strike, and, and you can put that into your stream. You can app implement it into your stream. Uh, it's actually well worth a look up. Actually, I see if I can find it later on during the day, um, but. You anyone can do this if you have good coding knowledge and understanding of how Unreal works. And this is why I was saying, like, why the Twitch sort of extensions that uh, live extension. I can't remember what it's actually called. Where, like I said, with OCE, they've shown it before. That's how they do their polls for each of the games for the uh, Throwdown Championship. Why can't Rock League then? also have those polls as well but like i was saying even more information like heat maps and that which the nerdy ones of us actually want to go see and get that information but then for other people it's not affecting them at all twitch are putting out good sort of like bits for this and could quite easily pull that info however science wanted because you know they could keep it to themselves if they wanted to make it an rcs thing but they've got to put it out there because at the moment we're there going we want this and we're not getting anything back the whole debate over we want boost shown for every single player on the stream has been going since near enough the first RLCS and the fact they haven't commentated uh, commented on it sort of makes us annoyed, really. That's, for me, the biggest gripe because this is something I, I really want. And if I'm told, oh, it's not what we want to do again, then we'll probably just drop it and just be there a little bit annoyed but we won't keep bringing it up like we do every half year or so, Jay. <laughs> I, I think it would really take like a community mm. organizer to to get some sort of programmer into to to create one of those and mm. really just elevate the level of of of, how, of what you can do in broadcasting. You know, like I I see the way that Rewind and Rival operate and they really like push the boundaries of uh, not to toot our own horns because we both work for those organizations themselves. Um, but you know, we, we sort of like especially with Rival and the way that they operate, they really want to push the boundaries of how online broadcasting is done for Rocket League. And I think that mm. it'll really just take someone to create something like that. To to push that further further uh, along mm. and create like another new uh, another new way of, of viewing the game that that might change sonics's mind i don't think it will 100 percent, but for certain if someone could just create like a mod of some sort of, mm. of some sort of nature that adds that to the game i think it would benefit so many people so just on the whole aspect of mods i'm not sure if sonics like it or not because they don't want uh, other people right, sort well, of out doing them because I can remember when it was back in the early days of Rival when they actually had mods to make like the pitch black using I think it was either Alpha mod or Bakes mod uh, back in the early days and Silent basically went can you not change it it's a bit like League of Rockets actually 
all of that. So we don't really know what Psionics want in their game and what they don't, because again, that's not communicated properly. Well, in that case, why not <laughs> just create a browser overlay for that? In fact, like I was mentioning about that CSGO that's overlay, that's exactly how it works. Um, if you go onto Google, you can type for the... Uh, 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 Oster Kurden, I'm never going to say that right, but uh, uh, an Oster Kurden CSGO over Observer Custom HUD. If you go CSGO mm. Observer Custom HUD in, in Google, you, you download that and you can actually, uh, it's a program that basically like mounts itself to the game and reads all that information and spits it out as a, new, uh, as a new overlay. And it's not actually a mod to the game itself. It literally just takes the information that the server is being sent out. So technically, you don't even need to mod the game. You know, all you need to do is just find a way to interpret that information and put it out on a broadcast environment. And I've done this before as well. It's actually piss off easy, uh, just so mm. long as you have the framework and the coding knowledge there. So long as anyone can, anyone can make it, anyone can do it. And I think that it will just be a, a fantastic way to uh, 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 to mm. elevate things a little bit further. Yeah. You let someone do that, and then Sonics don't actually have to put the work on that themselves. Exactly, go, that too. Oh, you've done that? Okay, we'll use it. We'll endorse it even, you know, on Reddit and that. And all they've got to do is essentially give someone API access, which they do give out API access to a lot of people. I don't know about in-game API, like server access. I don't know how that would be done exactly, because when you look at Smash, they only get the goals and the um, end score. They don't get any other stats, I think. So, but it's something that Sonics could do. Yeah, it certainly is. And even my perspective and the way that I think, I think mm. anyone can do it as well. So there you go. <laughs> Those are some things and some of the spectator UI overlay stuff that we'd like to add throughout the uh, the game itself. And hopefully Sonics can hear that. And hopefully they can do some really, really good work with it. Um, but now moving on to the mailbag. Of course, if you're not aware, you can join our Discord and ask us any questions. And maybe we'll answer it on the show. If you're in the Twitch chat right now, it's exclamation mark Discord. Uh, if you're listening to the audio or watching the video version of this podcast, you can take a look at it in the description below so two questions coming in from our boy tag matter we had to skip one of them last week so we'll get onto that one first um what are your thoughts about players that have uh that have games from that have that have game from 1v1 game modes such as osm and scrub etc uh what do you think about the lack of 1v1 tournaments in the scene compared to before uh now i'm a, I'm a purist right i i believe <laughs> in the one and only game mode that should only ever be played and that should be the three versus three game mode and the reason why i say that is because for the most part it's basically established, right? Hmm. I think that it's, uh, uh, you know, I think that it should be the de facto game mode for all esports, which is why it pisses me off when I see stuff like the uh, the Universal Open with $100,000 as the primary off-season LAN versus the uh, Northern Arena LAN, mm -hmm. which is 3v3, and that had $50,000. That kind of thing pisses me off. But for 1v1s themselves, I actually do think they're a pretty decent, um, they're actually a pretty mm -hmm. good sort of show match style of uh, tournament. And, you know, I can, I can see that the way that that can also be done as a spectator sport, um, as well as a, a, a great sort of Hug service almost, you know, especially because mm. there are there is a great way to build up your mechanical skill as a one v one, um, and and I don't think it's it's the worst thing in the world, you know. Again, I'm a purist. I think the three v three is the god tier is the god tier game mode, um, and I don't I, and I don't think the lack of one v one tournaments in the scene is going to be a major a, a major loss to Rocket League as a whole. But at the same time, I don't think it's that much of uh, I don't think it would be that much harmful if we saw more one v one tournaments come to fruition. No, especially you if there's something like the League of Rockets, right? Especially if they got like League right. of Rockets, that's absolutely fine. I absolutely love that tournament. The second time around, the first time was a little bit eh about it, but the second time it felt much, much better. It felt like it was a much more uh, uh, well-run show, and I actually loved the overall product mm. they put out. Well, that was it for the the first one, which was the the uh, twelve times was too edited down. Essentially, they only showed the highlights, as it were, which we want to see a whole match because that's how you get immersed into it. For the uh, second one, yeah, they did that, and it was a lot better. Um, they could just so easily be a space for a major tournament, uh, like what's going on with the Universal Open, to be brought in to the sort of scene. And you got to think, that's like free sort of area, essentially, for anyone to move in out of all the major tournament supplies. Let's just say ESL come in with their 1v1 tournament, do it like the Universal Open, Orgs are still getting more out of it because it, it, you're known as, like, say, a complexity player, as a G2 player. And I don't know if you'd want on, say, the... Um, well, you could quite easily put on, like, overlays of the brackets. Uh, G2 Rizzo gets through to semi finals. It's not hard. You know, it's more... It's better for the Orgs, who we know at the moment are very frustrated with Rocket League as it is. And it's a different area, which plays... There are a lot of 1v1 players that 
love 1v1s but can't play it because it is not viable. The only one that should give out money for 1v1s is Johnny Boy. And, you know, yeah. it's not always seen as the best character in the community or some people don't like him, some people do. There's got to I mean, be more than just one place is what I'm trying to get out here. Because I... some people, you know... Mm. That's it. I don't know. Like, like I, I feel, I feel like the show match style that Johnny Boy and League of Rockets run, run is perfect for one v one. You know, I think that that's fine. Okay. So I have like the, the side element, a nice thing that really, really enthusiastic members mm. of the scene can go and watch because we have we had a similar thing in, in Counter Strike. You know, our our our, uh, our show matches are generally one v one or two v two or three v three, which is completely mm. fucking different to the five v five that we run as a regular thing. But yeah. because five v five is the established format, that's what we go with for the big tournaments. But for other tournaments outside tournaments you know the 2v2s the 1v1s they're perfectly fine i just think that you know maybe they shouldn't be bringing it to the forefront overall and, and doing really really uh, uh big tournaments i'd like to see you know rivals mm -hmm. like another crack at 1v1s rewind could very well do so um and actually you know what since we're on that that's the last segue into the second point that tag that, that tag made and he asked another question right here with the slow introduction of big tournaments for high level players what do you think the uh, what do you think of the direction of smaller organizations that focus on lower level people like mld united rogue etc and i think the going? 1v1s and 2v2s might actually be pretty damn good, you know. Throw, throw up some, uh, throw up some show matches. Throw up some, some different style of Rocket League, and there you go. You'd be able to conquer a pretty good market that's currently mm. lacking in Rocket League as a whole. Because essentially, at the moment, what's going on is um, with these Renegade Cups, for example, that's being given to the community orgs near enough run their miners. But from this, we should hopefully be able to get sponsorship, and that's where I would encourage, you know, minor league doubles, United, Rogue, Rival, whoever to go on and use the stats they've got from this, get sponsors, let's just say Corsair, HyperX, whatever, to then go and go, okay, we want to be the de facto 1v1 tournament. You know, you can do that at the start because no one else is running 1v1s currently, to which HyperX or whatever go, okay, so you're going to be the only ones running this and you're going to get a massive influx of people that want this. That's pretty good for us. So you put it up and, hey, you've got a good tournament there. And again, that sort of variance makes it unique, which is very good for brands anywhere to come into because you get known as the 1v1 brand or whatever. You know, you think 1v1 tournaments, and from then on you go, oh, that's uh, the HyperX tournaments. A bit like when we think of 1v1s, we think of the 12 Titans. You know, you yeah. just take over that mantle, which is pretty ace for brands to get into. So try and look at that sort of step forward, I would say. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and they're going to kind of tie in really well with each other because right now 3v3 is starting to go higher and higher up the depths, you know. Like the, the, the only community organizations that seem to uh, have a handle on 3v3 tournaments at the moment are the big ones. Your rivals, <laughs> your Rocket Forgets, your Rewinds, your Nexus that's coming back right now. You know, all of those organizations are going to dominate for the most part all of the 3v3 stuff. So I think smaller organizations could do well to look into the show matches, could do well mm -hmm. to look into the other formats. I, I think that that's where, that's the new direction for the alternative if Rocket League game modes. Yeah, and the only thing I can say is these show matches, the 1v1s, can't be a single show match. That's not where you get prize tournament money for it, because remember, that's all players really... Like, they can sign up for the fun, but the money is the big on-the-line sort of stuff. So from just doing a 1v1, a single match, you're not going to get, like, a lot of funding for even Match Arena and that. So doing a 1v1 tournament, maybe an invitational top four players um, yeah. are invited for 1v1 and then the other four make it through just a single qualifier top four come out of that that could be a good way to do it essentially and then get you know you'd run that across say two weekends that's a lot of time for ma like matrino funds to go in because again this sort of community level matrino is pretty good for it um if you can't get a sponsor that is and so yeah i think we could get the ball rolling in that area the only problem is that some players are going to get a bit annoyed that they weren't invited or that players are invited have to jump that skip it's always quite a hard debate between the two yeah and i think that balance is going to come down to which organization wants to do what but you know mm. that that's my personal opinion you know certainly if i was an if i was a new community if i was trying to start up you know maybe the aftershock tournament organizer i don't know <laughs> but uh you know if i was going to do that that's certainly where i'd aim to because 3v3 right mm. now is becoming the game mode at the moment so with that being said, uh, unless you've got any closing thoughts, Bacon? My only last thought is that you have to get in big players with a big prize pool to sort of get viewership. We know from Rewind in History just doing 1v1 taunts where we were offering, I think it was $30 or something back in the day. Ben might just $15 and then anything on top added via Match Reno. 
we were getting 20 viewers or something. That's the big difference here is that 3v3, you get a lot more backing because like Psyonix doing the Renegade Cups and all of that. And just generally, that's what players know. That's how they get the bigger viewerships. 1v1s, you've got to hit straight out of the park. You've got to be putting up, let's say, a 250-pound 1v1 tournament just to be able to break into a relevant mold because otherwise you're not going to get the players actually sign up because they don't really care about the prize pool and you're not going to get the viewership because it's not really anything on the line. There's not enough stakes to make it interesting to watch, which is a problem for those t smaller tournament orgs. Well, there you go. Those are our thoughts on 1v1 and 2v2 tournaments and, of course, oh. the uh, smaller community organizations and where we think they can go with the scene getting ever so bigger. So mm -hmm. with all that out of the way, it's time to get on to our tournament updates of the week. Uh, no Renegade Cup uh, as of yet, but again, uh, that's going to be one <sighs> hell of a time to get into because it's only this week and then suddenly we're going to have another third section of the tournament updates. It's like, oh, fuck, we've got so many more games to do. <laughs> so let's get through this week's game first. We've got the RLRS uh, to st kick things off. Uh, take a look at the current standings right now as uh, currency of Liquipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Team Secret currently dominate at 5-0. So far undefeated, they are the Dignitas of the RLRS. Red Reserve pulling in a close second. Method and Savage come up, rounding out the top four. And in the bottom four, we've got Nordavin, the Clappers, XL, and Copenhagen Flames. Copenhagen Flames still yet to get a win so far. Hmm. So let's take a look at a couple of talking points. Um, you know, it's kind of the, the week of expected results more than anything else. Yeah. You know, Secret and Secret doing as well as they as they want to. You know, we kind of expected them to do extremely well. Red Reserve also in that top two spot. They were they were kind of like C Secret and Red Reserve were my two picks. Like, okay, these guys are gonna go through to the promotion playoffs for me. Yeah. And certainly they are living up to that hype. Yeah, just they are doing so well at the moment. Red Reserve, I will say didn't play their best this week. It seemed like they were very off, yet they were still able to pull out wins. It was super close games for them between both Northern and XL. Like I said, it just felt like it wasn't them putting in 100% and they can still win. That shows that they're of a high caliber. If, you know, you can do that and essentially get away with it. Red Reserve, don't make this a habit, please. <laughs> because we want to see please. you guys up in our OCS <laughs> and we want to see you guys get promoted now. But... That just shows they've got the makings of a great team and Secret have just been absolutely performing out of their skins this entire season. Like They have not let up once. I actually mm. say, tell a lie, they lost one game to Clappers. Let's not do this again, please, boys. You put 15 <laughs> to 3 game-wise. Let's uh, keep it. Well, you've got two more games to play, so what's that? Let's make it 21 to 3. Easy job, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they should be able to do so. I mean, they have got to face Savage next week, uh, which I think might be a bit of a challenge. Certainly, they should be able to, to beat Method no problems. Uh, yeah. That's the second. That's the second team they're taking on. Actually, I uh, don't know. Do you think they I, could do do well against I, Method? Method can do it. They've let me uh, quickly bring up Liquipedia myself. So I did look this up there, and I was like, Method is still on the run here, and Savage as well. You got to think they haven't played uh, an extra game like Red Reserve and secret have but they're still very much in the runnings i'm just literally like i said picking up liquipedia right now you do know that the I... uh, league standings are in the show planning document right <laughs> no uh, well yeah i can see the league standings but i'm saying i can't see um the previous oh, the match matches results. right yeah, okay, and yeah. the upcoming matches because that's still a big part to it because you know, we still got two more weeks of league play go. Secret versus Savage still a match. So, you know, you think Savage win that, and that's going to be a big bolster up there. We know, I think, Secret and Red Reserve are currently safe in the top four, but that top two spot isn't decided yet. You've got Red Reserve Method as well this upcoming week, so that's a big one there. And then in the final week, you've got um, basically the teams playing out their normal ones actually next this coming week as well on the third so two days time we've got method versus secret so nothing is decided yet between this top four and like i said red reserves still have copenhagen flames which should be a win um we'll talk about why i'm not shitting on copenhagen flames at all in a little bit but then method also have copenhagen flames so it's like the big matches are happening this upcoming week and then the week after is sort of like your expected wins so you're saying expected wins, but they could, if that's a loss, then you've lost it. So the pressure is still going to be mm. all the way there right up into the last match, which, funny enough, is Savage versus Clappers, which you got to think, Clappers, if they can cause an upset, could just kill Savage out of that top two spot. I'm loving RLRS this season because it is so highly tense. 
Yeah, and yeah. No, nah, just to toot the horn of EU a little bit. Just you, you, you can't get much better than that. You, you know, every oh, yeah. single week seems to matter, even though it is a round, is one round best. Uh, you know, mm. uh, a single round robin uh, uh, format. You know, it's just really, really cool to see how that's all going down. Um, but you know, moving away from the top end, we've got the lower end side of things. EXO and Copenhagen Flames, unfortunately, continuing just to remain at the bottom. Uh, again, I'm still kind of surprised that Copenhagen Flames have yet to win here because I honestly thought that they'd be doing a, a little bit better than this. I mean, I didn't expect them to make top four, um, but it does kind of it does kind of break my heart a little bit because this is the team that had that you know blah bracket run, which it could be watered down, but still pretty decent to beat out some of the names that were there. And unfortunately, you know, they just haven't been able to show a whole lot during the play. So for me, these two XL and Copenhagen Flames, I expect them to be in this spot. Um, Maybe flipped over, maybe XL on the bottom, Copenhagen Flames seventh. Basically, yeah. the Calibre and RL RS feels very similar to RLCS a couple of seasons ago. You can definitely see the difference in teams. So Copenhagen Flames and XL, even though they are great players, they're not your team secret. They're not team reserve. They're like team reserve, what I'm saying, red reserve. So it's <laughs> it's really hard to put it into words but basically they're doing as expected and that's not bad when you go think this is the ninth to 16th best team in the eu essentially so these are top level players someone's got to lose and unfortunately it's them you know yeah and yeah it, it just kind of sucks for me because again I, I hoped for a bit more and I'm not, I'm not sure if i expected more but certainly i hope for a bit more of copenhagen flames unfortunately i i don't know I'm, I'm, i don't know how to do the maths but i don't and how many matches have copenhagen flames got left here i uh they've still three got three more. matches actually so they could they, they could potentially try and um they could potentially make a decent run to to start T topping things over but i don't think i think it's mm. pretty much mathematically impossible for them to uh reach top four unless method and savage end up losing their next three games uh which i think is kind of unlikely that's it um, method and savage have to lose all three of their games and copenhagen flames new enough would have to sort win of do three. three o's essentially to catch up because copenhagen flames are currently on minus 10 games like on their differential savage or on plus man, six. That's, that's such a that's heartbreaking a thing to hear mm. man that's so heartbreaking oh jesus well yeah uh, that's unfortunate and when we're with excel unfortunately you know they're just kind of fallen from grace um but for the excel actually i think that this week um in particular when you take a look at their series mm. uh against excel uh, sorry against red reserve um you kind of talked about how red reserve uh were uh were looking you sort of like saw how how, how red reserve weren't doing uh amazing mm. but props to excel i do think that there was some sort of improvement that was being shown in this team um and, you know, the passing play was looking all right. You know, it, it didn't look like it was the, the greatest team form in the world. Uh, certainly not that I expected from Excel. Uh, and as well as that, you know, Mark is starting to find some form again. Uh, uh, Niels Cook looks pretty good. Um, but unfortunately, I think that all these changes, all these adjustments have come in a little bit too late. Well, it may be a little bit too late, but I seriously think Excel dropping out of RL RS is going to be the kick up the butt they need because... It will either be that kick up the butt where they've suddenly gone, okay, we've got a scrim, they're going to spend the whole off-season working, and they'll come back super strong, or they won't, and that's going to be them and then out that's of relevancy. Be the end of it. <laughs> but that is how competitive Rocket League should be, essentially. You lose, yeah. like, we, we think back a couple of seasons to uh, Complexity, back when they were Method. Like, they had a season where they did absolute naff, stuck together, and then became the second best team in EU. You gotta think it could happen for XL. I don't know if it will happen because the caliber is just so high at the moment in Rock League, but you hope for it anyway. Yeah, uh, we, we do hope for it. You know, I mean, I did kind of say that I, I did say a couple of weeks ago that I do think that the XL product is a bit of a fail. Um, I still think that it kind of is, um, but. I, 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 don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how things play out. Um, mm. I don't expect them to make top four, unfortunately, though. I, I think that there's just too many odds against them uh, to try and uh, to, to try and get that further up. So, mm. uh, you know, again, credit to Excel for managing to make some crucial improvements against Red Reserve. Um, Red Reserve, however, even still won that series, which really was, I think, Excel's big chance. If they had won that series against mm. Red Reserve, then suddenly we'd be looking at a very, very different set of standings. But um, uh, I'm going to say now, actually, th that those results from both Excel and Nordvin 
could have ruined Red Reserve getting top two. I'm just going to say, because they were so close, Red Reserve only earn, um, plus one game differentials from those games, which means at the moment they're currently standing there with the league table at plus three on the game differential, which isn't, I think, high enough. If, like I said, Method like, tie it up with Red Reserve, if Savage tie up, they could very well be, because at the moment they're currently above on the game differential, they could knock Red Reserve out of that spot, a bit like we saw last season with Placebo dropping, even though they had the same number of wins as uh, I think it was Secret and uh, it's now Mouse was there and it was Savet Geneva. They dropped because they didn't have the uh, game win percentage, essentially. So, I don't know, Red Reserve, they've got to be careful. They basically, I reckon they've got to win their next two games to stay up, which is a bit scary in a lot of sense, because if they tie it up, they might not make it in top two. They'll stay up for next season, but I don't think they will, which is, yeah, a very scary situation if you're Red Reserve now where you've got a lot of pressure on you. Well, Red Reserve are taking on Method alone next week. They'll only match the other match they have mm -hmm. in week five is Copenhagen Flames. But alongside that Method match, it's the third match of the night. We've got Secret versus Method that will be happening off stream. Uh, we've also mm -hmm. got Savage versus Secret to kick things off on the mainstream. XL versus Copenhagen Flames, that Red Reserve match in third. And Savage taking on XL as the fourth. XL with two victories that need to be taken next week. Uh, I'm, I'm having my doubts, but we'll see how they'll be able to do. Again, we'll bring you all of those results and standings next week on the next week's podcast uh, with the RLRS thing out of the way. It's time to get on to the RLCS. There are a lot of matches. I've noticed they started wrapping things up. Uh, six matches a week, um, but at this mm. stage right now, we have pretty much decided one of the teams that are going through to the uh, to the land, basically. Um, mm -hmm. Dignitas, 5-0, only dropping a single Damn. game holy shit holy shit holy shit like it's impressive it's it, it's stunning and i remember it really put things into perspective during the rlcs broadcast where lawler sort of like stood up and the, and he was um uh, he was explaining how the small decision makings from from dignitas are just uh, are just playing perfectly mm. absolutely perfectly to get them the win nothing they do is done in vain everything they do is is what they is, is all required and necessary mm. to put themselves in these positions and my question is is when do we stop dignitas i'm not i'm not saying who or, or or what but when because i don't think there's a single team in the entire rocket league scene right now that could potentially pull a viable upset in an rlcs scenario so this is a weird one especially uh, for me jay because dignitas this is their best chance to sort of get the perfect season if you want they could quite easily go i say quite easily you know rather quite lightheartedly, but they've got Weedem Girls coming up and Vitality. Weedem Girls, for me, being the only one that could stop them here because Weedem Girls have been playing nuts recently. But Dignitas are on the path to get a 7-0 in league play, which is absolutely nuts. And then we know their caliber at lands. So they could go on and win the land. You know, being the free-time team, which is... I think definitely never and for Turbo, going to that'll be, be matched. four times like that's, that's that's fucking goat level of performance. Just like you, you, you cannot god. match that's Dignitas, <laughs> Rocket God Turbo Pulsar. I'm mm. I, honestly, I'm I'm absolutely, I'm just literally, I, I can't I, literally. This is reminding me of, of of some of the some of the main staple errors throughout all of esports. You know, your, your SK Telecom T ones in, in League mm -hmm. of Legends, your NIPs and Counter Strikes. You know, um, I can't remember the one it was in Dota, but it was like a really dominant team for most of uh, Dota's early days. And mm. it, it's it's insane that this is the kind of thing that we're having in Rocket League. It's it's incredible because the way that Ding and Tash playing are playing right now, I don't think we've seen a more perfect style of game ever in Rocket League. And it's just such a really good time to be watching right now. I'm not sure hmm. when it will end. I'm not sure when the dynasty will die, but I don't see it happening anytime soon, man. See, that's a weird thing, because you're saying the most perfect sort of style of Rocket League. If we look at the comparison from last season to this season, you'll notice that that sort of growth between seasons isn't as large yeah. as before it's very small actually it's almost like the meta hasn't changed at all so dignitas have somehow perfected that meta whereas the other teams in the eu side of things anyway you've noticed the number of teams that did roster swaps to try and beat dignitas to try and be able to get up to that level and take them down and unfortunately it seems like this season the teams in comparison to dignitas whether it be from those roster locks or just uh, those roster swaps sorry or dignitas just you know, being able to perfect themselves, 
hasn't worked. If we look at that table, uh, lead the table once again. Uh, if Ben brings out brilliantly again, Ding Ding has five and oh, Weedham Girls doing great with that swap to bring in Metzenaris. That's a fantastic swap, and it's proven that four one. Flip side, not near enough change in anything, and it's benefited them. This is another point of those roster swaps actually might have hurt these teams that swap their rosters. 3 2 for flip side, when last season they looked really quite weak. They only just scraped on out of the uh, bottom two spots. And then Renault, Vitality, 2 3. And then the bottom half, 5 to 8, all with that same scoreline two wins, yeah. four losses which is absolutely ridiculous. And this shows the difference in level between RLCS and RLRS. RLRS, you've got two very like split halves, essentially. Here in RLCS, you've got a very close sort of like top half, and then you've got the same for the second half. It is like, and this could have, on different days, you could have seen flip side with, say, one win and three losses. Complexity could have been up there with, say, three wins, and three losses, I don't know. I'm just basically expecting that RLCS depends on the day. It is never a set sort of thing in stone. So that's why, again, the single round robin, we want change to at least bring up, I don't know, 12 teams into RLCS or keep with the eight and make it double round robin because the teams can change on the day. And it, it doesn't seem right, essentially. You know, it's an awkward thing to say. Yeah, um, that, that, that's a topic we can expand into uh, mm. later on down the line. I think you talk about sort of like how, mm. yeah, probably next week it might be a little feature, but uh, 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 you know, you sort of put in the document here about how the next week is going to be a massive tiebreaker because mm. four teams all sitting at the same positions. Like next week could be a pretty big decider for how the. For, um, is my camera gone? Uh oh, I'm being told my camera has gone. Uh, let me find out why that is. Hold on. Uh yeah, I've just uh, re-enabled you on stream together. But yeah, we'll go on. Uh, ben, do you have the graphic for next week's matches? It's got. Can you bring that up for me, bud? Um, yeah, you're looking fine for me at the moment, Jay. But next week, with the bottom half sort of tied at the same place, uh, close the website and bring it back up. Like, just reload the website, oh, okay. Jay. Uh, try that. But yeah, next week, we're going to have Fnatic versus PSG, the first one on the stream. And whoever wins from that game will actually be secured a place and whoever loses drops down so that is a vital game you've got vitality versus weed and girls remember vitality on a very they've got a looser bit of rope because essentially they've got two games this week out of all the uh teams that are in that lower half but they do have to win one just to sort of stay up the problem for them is they've got weed and girls and dignitas the two hardest teams in the league they've got to at least win one game from so that's super hard uh, next, you have Mouse and Complexity down there in the bottom half. Mouse and Complexity both have to face Flipside this week. So it's sort of a case of one of them have to beat Flipside or both of them have to lose, essentially. Or they could both win, which is even in a wilder situation, you know? But this coming week is probably going to be the most interesting game uh, games of Rocket League because each single game actually has value to it. With the exception of Weedham Girls versus Dignitas, which is just the top two teams going up against each other. So I just want to see that anyway. I don't care if it has oh, yeah. no real effects in the standings. Who knows? If Weedham Girls actually wins that, then they'll be secured in the top two. And that's nuts as it is anyway, you know? <laughs> I think if Weedham Girls beat Vitality earlier in the day anyway, that's them secure for top two as well. So... This coming week, next weekend, next Sunday, it's just going to be absolutely nuts for Rocket League. It's good. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be real damn good. Uh, I think for the next week. Uh, but a couple mm. more sort of like topics I wanted to build into because we kind of talk about you talk about mouse mouse balls and complexity. Mm. Uh, these two teams have been a little bit uh, not not my not my most highly repped. Um, just trying to see if we can. Sorry, I'm a little bit flustered because we're trying to get the webcam sorted out. Apparently, they're not showing up at all now. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> For me, I put down the document, and you put next to this "nope" in big bold letters. Basically, um, yeah, I asked the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked the question: Are mouse balls overhyped? Um, because I'm not going to lie, when I when I was watching the PSG series, I I could not rate them at all. Like they just didn't look like the same sort of team. Uh, let me see if I can bring up my uh, my notes real quick. Because I actually did do some vod review on this particular uh, <laughs> on this particular series, but uh, it just felt like PSG dictated the pace like all throughout, and mouse balls 
Jones' sort of like defend and counterattack style was completely mm. shut down throughout. And while it did look like a style that worked really well in, in, in weeks one and two, coming up against Vitality, beating them, and then taking the only game that Dignitas have lost in this mm. entire season away from them, you know, it looked like Mouse Sports were really legit. And 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 uh, I'm 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 no everybody else was just going, yeah. You know, Christ, guys, these guys are amazing, you know, and, and I certainly was guilty of that. But seeing them now, I feel like it might be necessary to rein that in a little bit uh, because, it, 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 you know, unfortunately, it seems like it was a case that that one game victory hyped them up to be this team that unfortunately they haven't lived up to the, expe the expectations of being. Yeah, for me, I'm there going, no, the bomb half is all... Um, real same. quick, I've got, I've got some echo, dude. Do you want to mute yeah, your yeah, microphone on stream together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry about that um but yeah just the bottom half is all the same so mouse technically at the moment are fifth in the league you gotta think they're just the team that just got promoted so that's actually a pretty good result for most teams you then stick in the bottom too you know or you find it very hard to get even get up to fifth or sixth Mouse are doing absolutely fine. We look at their game differentials on the board, and they are actually only negative three games from, you know, negative two, whatever. They've won two games, lost four. So they've lost two games more than they've won, and yet they're only down three games. That means they've been super close in everything. So Mouse are actually doing a super good job at the moment. And like I was saying earlier with how this coming week's going to be a differential, if, say... Mouse loses games and they're stuck on two wins, four losses, like a couple of the other teams. Because of they've won so many more games than or lost less games than other teams, they'll stay up. Mouse are in a really comfortable spot right now, and they've been impressive in their RLCS debut. Yeah, I, I still think they've been impressive. Again, I'm just, you know, I, I feel like you know, there's been a, there's, 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 there's a lot of confidence has been lost this week, like, like well and truly, because PSG themselves are not a team that I rate particularly highly, you know, and certainly in the standings, they actually rank below uh, Mouse Sports by three games in total. So mm. just taking a look at the way that Mouse Sports were struggling to keep up with PSG and the way that Mouse Sports, especially in the early, early part of the season, were just running through everybody, you know, it, it's it's it has it has disappointed me a little bit. It has taken the wind out of the sails from Mouse Sports, in my personal opinion. Uh, but you know, another team that have unfortunately lost the wind in their sails is Complexity. Uh, this is like literally the ultimate fall from grace for this team. Like, like yeah, they've gone from being top three at the World Championships to I'm not even mm. sure if they're going to make it into the 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 regional playoffs. Like, of all the roster moves we've ever seen in the RLRS, mm. R R C S, this has to be like among the worst i think gibbs said it was the worst i don't know there might be a couple sort of like you know if i if i went through the history books and checked them out there might be a couple that would rank worse but for this <laughs> one certainly it is a ridiculous downgrade for complexity so actually complexity is a weird one because like i said greasy coming onto the team i knew that he was a good friend of the other two and was playing with him this was something that Metzer wanted to leave so they brought him in really enjoyed playing with him and thought they this was their best chance I've never rated Greasy as a player I think since season three so the season after you know Flipside won the uh, world championship I still didn't rate Greasy massively but I will say this season he's been the best player for complexity so that is really really weird to sort of say when you're there like why did they bring him in he's a bad choice to bring for the team but he's the best player on the team now so uh, see i don't for, know if it, it's weird one. The, the thing about it is i think it's more to do with the concept of the roster swap because greasy i still think is an all right player again like so like you said i don't rate him particularly high i still think he's very capable i think he fit in pretty well with his last team although that being said we them girls swapped him out and now they're doing imme immediately better oh, um, it's the perfect but, team them yeah, but like the through. thing about thing about thing about Metanaris is that you take a roster like that and it was so fucking like it, it worked so well on a on a chemistry level that there was almost no that you know you couldn't really conceptualize a way where they can make a roster swap and still and still make it work. You know, hmm. Metanaris was the enabler and he's also been the enabler for We Dem Girls in 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 this latest new project. So, you know? And well, I, I I feel like while I don't think Greasy Meister is necessarily a downgrade in terms of just skill 
I think that they lost some some magic when it came to stopping out Metzenaris. So Metzenaris, when he was playing on complexity, had to play a lot more defensively. That's not what he wants to do. Like he said, he was, the, he was the enabler, but that wasn't his choice. So coming on to this um, Weird M Girl side, he's gone a lot more aggressive, a lot more attacking, which is something he really wants to do. And that's what he wants. You know, that's his favorite play style. So him being on Weedem Girls, being able to do what he's good at, what he enjoys, is why Weedem Girls is doing so much better. And he's a natural fit in with Remco and Ignite. So you've got three players whose play styles mesh really well. They get on all right with each other, you know, even though Remco and Ignite had a rocky, rocky start, you know, as everyone remembers with the drama back in the day. But these three are loving Rocket League at the moment, and rightfully so. They're 4-1 in the standings at the moment. Complexity are going the wrong way, and I reckon next season we're going to see one of those three players change. And I don't think it's going to be greasy. I'm just saying that now. Hmm. I uh, oh Jesus. I mean, if, if I mean, I, I think when we actually go, I think when we come to our sort of like our, our, our off-season roster shuffle prediction show, uh, when 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 our hmm. CS land is over, we're probably going to dive and dive into this a little bit more in depth. I think I've got to do much more research before I make a solid sort of opinion on who's going to be who's out and who's in for complexity. But I, I can see where you're coming from with that one. Like, you know, a greasy meister with a pickup like that, they don't really want to get rid of the uh, of of their. They have a lot of faith in him. Um, the question is, is who's next? Morgan saw a lot really more than anything else. And uh, again, it, 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 it's it's such it's such a complete reversal to the way the complexity were playing for the last two seasons. In season three, mm. they were insane. In season four, they were still insane. You know, they weren't able to get the title itself. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, again, it's it's more disappointing than anything else to see that complexity have fallen. This so far, complexity's man, like, problem just, uh... is their play style at the moment, Joe, and that's why them versus Mouse, where it was both Mouse were having an off day as it was, it fell anyway, and their play style didn't mesh well against their opponents, which you happen sometimes. That's how you get basically duff games which don't seem enjoyable uh to watch. And then like it's games where you know you get the uh you get Twitch chat going, oh these are like diamond players. No, it's just because those play styles aren't working against each other. You know, the best games of Rocket League to watch are actually those where both play styles flow into each other and both teams are allowed to do what they want to do because then you see nut shots and they're getting saved and it's awesome to watch. But here, they don't flow into each other very well and not last week, not this weekend just gone, but the one before, Mouse versus Complexity. Complexity pretty much won that purely because they had the experience. These are three very experienced players that can keep their cool in tense moments. So even if Complexity, which I do think are going to be one of those teams that end up in the bottom two, go to the uh, relegation promotion tournament, I'm not worrying too much because I think they'll you know, stay up because they've got the experience and they should be able to pull it together by then. Mm. Yeah, okay, well, th those are some points about complexity. I'll be curious to see how things roll out. Um, next week, complexity are playing against Flipside, uh, a team mm -hmm. that have been on a massive rise. And I think we're going to talk more about Flipside and We Them Girls next week because those are two teams that I really want to delve into more deeply yeah. uh, about the, the way that they've been playing and the way that they have improved this season. But uh, a quick rundown of next week's matches, of course, Fanatic taking on PSG is the first match of the RLCS off, uh, on stream matches. I'm going to say off stream mm -hmm. matches. There are no off stream <laughs> matches for RLCS. That'd be great, though. We'd love to that. take. Oh my god! Oh my god! Like someone will be looking for Shyster's head by the end of the week. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Fnatic taking on PSG first. We them girls up against Vitality. Flipside versus Mouse Sports. That might be one to watch. Um, just keep your eyes off on mm -hmm. that one. The other one to watch as well will be We them girls versus Dignitas. Make sure you tune in for that one for certain. Flipside versus Complexity to round it out alongside Vitality and Dignitas as the last game of round five of the regular season. And that's it for us today here at Aftershock. Yeah. Uh, a, a pretty, a pretty, uh, a pretty fun show. A little bit of uh, tilt involved pretty in certain cases <laughs> from both of us as well. You know, uh, mm. packed show. Lots and lots of stuff going on, um, especially behind the scenes as well. Actually, for those of you audio listeners who've been listening to the SoundCloud versions of the of, of this podcast, uh, we are. Work I'm currently 
about 85% through an actual proper distribution uh, system for the <laughs> podcast itself and for the audio versions of it. So make sure you keep it locked to all the social medias. Again, it's at the Twitter, at RL Aftershock. You can join them in the Discord. It's all in the descriptions of the podcast mm -hmm. versions. And of course, if you're live on Twitch chat, those commands are exclamation mark Twitter and exclamation mark Discord. If you want to get involved in the mailbag segments, then you can join the Discord to go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll try and see if we can make it a bit more active. I know that me and Bacon haven't been the uh, uh, the biggest talkers in that particular Discord, but we're working <laughs> on it. We promise. Um, but yeah, uh, any closing thoughts there, Bacon? Nope, just looking at mail, uh, the mailbag already, we've got, what is that, four questions for next week already? So mailbag is going to be a big one next week. Yeah. So let's try and get a couple more questions from you guys there at home in. Yeah, well, there you go. Once again, we want to thank you all very much for joining us. The VOD will be out later tonight, so make sure you tune in and keep it locked on if you miss any of the podcasts for that. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for more Aftershock.